So as of version 1.3, Honkai Star Rail has a large amount of DPS characters for players to choose from, such as Zile, Genuine, Kafka, and the two most recent as of this video, Don Hung and Bibida Lune, which I'll just refer to as Don Hung version 2 from this point on, and Blade. In every video game, every DPS character has one job, to dish out as much damage as possible, as quickly as possible. The DPS characters in Star Rail are no exception, but what makes the DPS characters in Star Rail stand out from each other is not only the element that they use to deal damage, but also the path or the class that they reside in as a DPS character. And out of all the paths in Star Rail, it's always been the Destruction Path, aka the path that Blade and Don Hung version 2 reside in, that has always been the most interesting to me. It's the path that the main character, the Trailblazer, starts out in first off, and is described as the class that deals outstanding amounts of damage and possesses great survivability, and being suitable for various combat scenarios in the game itself. Which is why in today's video, I wanted to break down what I believe is the Honkai Star Rail development team's direction for making the destruction path stand out further from the other two main DPS paths, Hunt and Erudition. A distinction that I believe will be very important to make as more DPS characters for different paths are added to the game, especially with a certain Ice Queen that's around the corner. So for those who are unaware, paths in Honkai Star Rail essentially make up the class system that's in the game. So for example, the Abundance path serves as the healer class in Honkai Star Rail, where Characters that are on this path focus on healing allies and restoring HP to the team. Meanwhile, characters that are on the preservation path focus on providing shields to their allies and reducing the amount of damage that's taken by the, by the entire team from enemies. The main paths that I'm going to focus on for this DPS discussion are Hunt, Erudition, and Destruction. I know that Kafka is a DPS character that is on the Nihility path, and yes, her damage output is actually absurd when she's set up properly, but her means of dealing damage is a bit less straightforward compared to other DPS characters that I'm going to reference on this, on this video. With her kit being centered around setting up and triggering DOTs upon enemies multiple times with her ultimate and skill. There's a lot of outside factors that can manipulate just how much damage Kafka can deal, so for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to leave her out of this DPS discussion. If there's enough demand in the comments, I'll make an, an entire video centered around Kafka in the future if you all want. She honestly deserves it, let's be real here. <laughs> Alright, so let's break down the DPS characters from the Hunt, Erudition, and Destruction paths. So, Hunt DPS characters typically focus primarily on single target damage while being pretty lackluster in multi-target scenarios. Erudition DPS characters focus primarily on multi-target damage while usually being lackluster in single target scenarios. For example, in the weekly Kokolia boss fight, the multi-target DPS of an Erudition character like Himiko is very much needed for the first phase of the fight to simultaneously deal damage to Kokolia herself and the ice pillars that she summons that deal AoE damage every turn while they're alive. Meanwhile, Hunt characters, not named Sile, may struggle to repeatedly take out the ice swords before they deal too much damage to the entire team, which is important because Kokolia herself cannot be weakness broken while the swords are still alive. However, in Kokolia's second phase, where she stops summoning the swords and the fight essentially turns into a single target damage check where you basically have to kill her before she kills you, Himiko's DPS begins to fall off because none of the spread damage that she does to multiple targets with her skill and ultimate gets concentrated onto a single target, leaving a ton of missing damage on the table. This phase is where Hunt characters truly shine with their highly concentrated single target damage. So, with both single target damage being covered by Hunt characters, and multi-target damage being covered by erudition characters, where does that leave the destruction path and its characters? In my personal opinion, I believe the destruction path is slowly but surely shaping up its identity to be all about high risk, high reward DPS, aka the berserker DPS that's such a classic choice in most RPGs. The DPS characters on this path that can provide enough damage to perform the roles of erudition and hunt characters all in one but with a catch. If you need proof of the destruction path leaning towards being a berserker type of damage dealer, look at its path in the simulated universe. There are so many effects on this path that either force your characters to lose HP or scale in effectiveness the lower your character's HP is, forcing you to ride a fine line between success and failure throughout the entire simulated universe run if you choose to use the destruction path. Even its path resonance attack damage scales off of the missing HP of your party members. It even has one additional bonus where you can willingly sacrifice your character's HP upon cast to increase its damage even further, 
and another bonus where if a character that's at low HP takes damage, the Resonant Path attack goes off automatically even if it's not charged. It is by far the most dangerous of the currently available paths to use, but also one of the most effective when properly managed. So how many destruction characters in the game right now fit this risky type of gameplay? Well, not many actually. At least, when Honkai Star Rail was first released. I'm just gonna cut right to the chase and say that the destruction characters that were available at the game's launch were pretty underwhelming. With the exception of one, Lara fits the Berserker type identity for the, the destruction path very nicely at launch with her risky but rewarding counter attack playstyle that absolutely annihilated enemies when set up properly. Especially in AoE situations where you had multiple enemies targeting her at once. There's a high degree of variance in her damage output that depends on if enemies attack her or not, and she can still die even with the damage reduction bonus from her ultimate if not given the proper team setup and support. However, once she gets going and enemies are almost forced to attack her, she absolutely devours them alive with Svalrod's absolutely powerful counterattack. Especially while ultimate, while her ultimate is active where the counter attack becomes an AoE attack. And especially against enemies that are weak to physical damage, whew, it is disgusting. All of the other destruction DPS characters at launch though were super underwhelming at best, and at worst, were better off just being straight up forgotten. Arlen, for example, is a 4 star lightning destruction based character who has this unique gimmick where he can sacrifice HP instead of skill points to use his skill. Which, which would sound good on paper as it incentivizes a high risk high reward playstyle where you focus on spending his HP to use his powerful skills and focus on melting down enemies with his high damage. Problem is that he deals a very lackluster amount of damage that does not reward this risky playstyle at all actually. Even at E6, Arlen needs a high amount of investment to deal even competitive damage to other DPS options available, especially compared to Blade, which I'll talk more about later. And because of the need to constantly keep up his health, Arlen actually consumes a lot of skill points by proxy, demanding healing and shielding from outside sources almost all, almost constantly. He can become quite the resource hog if not used correctly, and the damage output that you get from such a resource hog is not necessarily worth it most of the time. Hook is a fire destruction character who deals a great amount of single target DPS, but does a very lackluster amount of multi target DPS which is why she struggles in any form of enemy encounters where there's more than one or two enemies to deal with at a time. Because of the way her kit works, it takes a while for her to truly get going with her damage output, with her having to charge up her ultimate and use it before her skill can become an AoE attack to begin with. And even then, she is still out DPS'd by dedicated hunt characters when, in terms of single target damage, even with her Eidolons. Because of this, she will most likely disappear as soon as a fire hunt character is added to the game that specializes in single target damage far more than she does. OOPS! And last, and for many people least of all, the physical destruction character known as the Trailblazer. So this character is great to have early game, but falls off hard later on due to their lack of damage in both single target and multi target fights, especially against enemies not weak against physical. So the physical Trailblazer has a ton of effects on their kit and both their passives and their Eidolons that you can get for free that proc when there are enemies that can be afflicted with the bleed status. However, against enemies that are not weak to physical, i.e. can't be afflicted with the bleed status, this just makes their already lower damage output fall even further off course, which is why many players replace physical trailblazer with preservation trailblazer as soon as they get the chance. So yeah, the destruction characters at launch were pretty underwhelming to be honest. However, the most recent destruction path characters, I believe, better resemble the high risk, high reward DPS archetype that I believe the destruction path as a whole is trying to emulate, where characters from this path provide enough damage to perform the roles of erudition and hunt characters all in one, 
assuming you can craft a team that can deal with their unique caveats. Blade is a wind destruction type character that can deal an absolutely outstanding amount of damage to all targets, whether single target or multi-target, by sacrificing his own HP using his skill to amplify his basic attack. The damage of his entire kit scales based on his missing HP, and with the Adalons, but more specifically Adalon 2, he can actually receive a crit rate bonus whenever he sacrifices portions of his HP using his skill. And, and when Blade is fully built up and is set up properly, he absolutely demolishes enemies with his high amounts of damage, especially if they're weak to win. Don Hong version 2 is the most recent destruction character that was added to the game at the time of this video's uploading. He's an imaginary based destruction character who deals an absurd amount of damage like Blade using his enhanced basic attacks. The difference between him and Blade is, is that instead of sacrificing HP for his amplified attacks, Don Hong's enhanced basic attacks can be leveled up multiple times using multiple skill points, and as a result he is a very very skill skill point hungry character. Skill points are an, an extremely valuable in combat resource to have for all characters and Don Hong consuming the most out of all of them in, in a team is a very tricky thing to plan around. He requires very strict team building to ensure his other teammates won't be forced to lower his DPS by using too many skill points themselves. But when things are properly set up, Don Hong version 2 is allowed to absolutely annihilate his opponents with actually absurd amounts of damage. Just look at the clips that I'm showing from this video right now. Like, this isn't even my Don Hung, this isn't even my Blade, and just look at these characters absolutely decimate the enemies that are in front of them. It is crazy. And while this character isn't out yet, the third destruction character that I feel is going to fit into the destruction path's high risk, high reward nature is Jing Lu, who, based on certain leaks, Okay, so for the sake of my channel not getting absolutely obliterated by the Mahoyo Ninjas, I'm going to refrain about talking about Jing, Jing Lui's kit. So unfortunately, you guys are just going to have to take my word for it when I say that Jing Lu absolutely follows the trend that Don Hung and Blade set before her, where she sort of solidifies the high risk, high reward nature of the destruction path as a whole. But now, another question is, pub is proposed. With all the crazy rewards and benefits that can be reaped from the destruction path DPSs with proper risk management, why use a hunt or erudition DPS? Well, in my personal opinion, I believe that the average hunt and erudition DPS still have value precisely because the destruction path DPSs are so risky by comparison. Because of the unique preconditions that must be fulfilled for most destruction based team comps to even function properly, there is a lot, and I mean a lot more room for error should your team face a bad bout of enemy targeting or RNG, poor skill point management, or debilitating status is being inflicted at the wrong time. Clara's counterattacking gameplay style gets completely shut down if she's hit with entanglement, imprisoned, or freeze. Don Hong version 2's kick consuming so many skill points at once can leave his team's support characters that rely on their skill to make a tough decision between basic attacking to generate more skill points for him or sacrificing a large chunk of the team's damage for the sake of utility. Blade constantly putting himself at death's doorstep for the sake of boosting his damage can have drastic consequences if he's struck by a severe attack at the wrong time, or if his teammates are unable to shield or heal him to safety. And Jing Lui quite literally. It's also worth mentioning that Hunt and Erudition characters have a lower base enemy aggro level than Destruction characters, meaning that by default they are less likely to be targeted by enemy attacks. Especially most Hunt characters, due to most of them having an Ascension passive that lowers their enemy aggro level even further when they're at low HP allowing them to avoid even more attacks should they be lucky enough to do so. Uh, the second reason why I believe Erudition and Hunt characters have value still compared to de their destruction counterparts is that there is also a common trend of most destruction characters needing specific team comps in order for them to even function properly. Blade needs a preservation unit like Chapard or Fire Trailblazer that'll lessen any damage he takes that isn't self-inflicted, and a healer for that emergency healing when the damage gets too much for him to handle. Don Hong version 2 needs teammates that are skill point positive, or at least aren't as reliant on using their skill as him, such as Ting Yun and most Abundance units while no one is at low HP. Clara's 
entire team is focused around directing enemy fire towards her and making her counterattacks hit as hard as possible. Which, need I remind you, is why it sucks when she gets afflicted with a status that prevents her from defending herself. So she likes being paired with characters like March 7th for her shield that'll increase the aggro level of those protected by it. By comparison, most hunt and erudition characters can be slapped on the vast majority of teams with no issue. Hell, a hunt and erudition character can be put on the same team so that there's two forms of DPS ready to go for most situations. Although a lot of planning and, and speed allocation and things of that nature need to be made for that particular team comp to be optimal, but it's at least an option that can be done compared to most destruction based DPS characters. It also helps that the performance of most hunt and erudition characters are more consistent than their destruction counterparts. Not reaching the same absurd highs, but not reaching the same abysmal lows should something go wrong. Himiko not having enough skill points to use her skill sucks sometimes, but it's nowhere near as detrimental when it happens to Don Hong version 2. Yan Ching prioritizing not taking damage at all to be at his strongest is a lot more of a safer and reasonable condition to fulfill than make sure that this character that injures themselves each time they attack doesn't die. So what was the point of this video? To break down what makes the destruction path unique to the other paths, both now and in the future? To show how much hype I have for Jing Lu's eventual release, since she is an ice destruction character? Yeah, but I also wanted to break down why I believe the erudition and hunt characters will still have value, even after more destruction characters are added to the game. In other words, Genuine is still good everyone, he is not a power crap unit just because Blade, Kafka, Don Hong, and eventually Jing Lui exist. And apparently the people who saw the community post I posted as I was writing the script feel the same. Thanks for voting on that post guys, appreciate it. I think personally it's still far too soon to cry foul and to cry power creep in Honkai Star Rail when the game isn't even a year old yet. But anyways, I believe that's going to do it for me for this video, if you guys enjoyed Please like, comment, and subscribe for more as it really helps me out in getting this video spread out to the YouTube algorithm and and I would really appreciate being able to hit my 1000 sub 1000 subscriber goal sometime soon. Comment down below what do you guys feel about the destruction path? How do you feel it's it's making itself stand out in comparison to the hunt and erudition paths? And as well as do you think there's power creep in Honkai Star Rail? Make sure to comment your thoughts and stuff down below. Honestly I just I really appreciate hearing from you guys. But until then, this is Jabari98 here, signing out. Y'all have yourselves a damn good one. Peace.